In calculus, you spend a lot of time computing derivatives. When you first start out, you learn how to compute the derivatives of basic functions like polynomials, trigonometric functions, exponential, and logarithmic functions. Then you start to combine these together to make more complicated functions. The five main function operations are addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and function composition. Luckily, there's a derivative rule for each of these five operations, and today we're going to talk about the rule for division, and that's called the quotient rule. Let f of x and g of x be two functions. You can make a new function by dividing f of x by g of x. We call this the quotient. The quotient rule answers the question, what is the derivative of f of x divided by g of x? The rule says that the derivative of f divided by g is the derivative of f times g minus f times the derivative of g all over g squared. If you leave out the x's, you can write this more compactly as the derivative of f divided by g is f prime times g minus f times g prime all over g squared. Sometimes people will write this a little bit differently. They might write it as g times f prime minus f times g prime all over g squared. These two expressions are the same because f prime times g equals g times f prime. The order in which you multiply doesn't matter. We call this the commutative property. Some people like putting the derivatives at the end of each term, while others like keeping f and g in the same order. It really doesn't matter. The important thing is that the minus sign must come before the term f times g prime. Let's see an example. We'll use the quotient rule to find the derivative of y equals 3x plus 1 divided by 2x minus 5. This function is a quotient, and if you graph it, you get a hyperbola. It has an asymptote at x equals 5 halves. This is because when you plug in x equals 5 halves, you get 0 in the denominator, which gives you division by 0. This causes the function to blow up towards positive infinity or negative infinity. Since f of x equals 3x plus 1, the derivative of f is 3. And because g of x equals 2x minus 5, g prime equals 2. We can now plug everything into the quotient rule. f prime times g is 3 times 2x minus 5 minus f times g prime is 3x plus 1 times 2, all over g squared, which is all over 2x minus 5 squared. Let's rewrite the numerator in standard form so the numbers come before the parentheses. That gives us 3 times 2x minus 5 minus 2 times 3x plus 1 all over 2x minus 5 squared. 3 times 2x minus 5 is 6x minus 15. And negative 2 times 3x plus 1 is negative 6x minus 2. The 6x's cancel, leaving us with negative 17 all over 2x minus 5 squared. Now, the square of a number is always positive, so the denominator is always positive except when x equals 5 halves, but we already know to avoid that because of division by 0. The numerator is negative 17, which is negative, and a negative number divided by a positive number is negative, so the derivative is always a negative number. And if you look at the tangent lines to the graph, you can see they always tilt downwards, so their slopes are always negative numbers, so our answer makes sense. Next, let's use the quotient rule to find the derivative of y equals tangent of x. You may have already memorized this derivative, and that's okay, but if not, you can use the quotient rule to find the derivative. Now, tangent of x is equal to sine x over cosine of x. This is a quotient, so we can use the quotient rule with f of x equals sine x and g of x equals cosine of x. Since f of x equals sine x, the derivative of f is cosine of x and the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine x. We now have everything we need to use the quotient rule. f prime times g is cosine x times cosine x, minus f times g prime is sine x times negative sine x, all over cosine squared x. Remember, the cosine of x to the nth power can be written as cosine to the nth power x. This is a very common shorthand notation that allows you to cut back on how many parentheses you need to write. So we're now left with cosine squared x plus sine squared x all over cosine squared x. An identity from trigonometry is that cosine squared x plus sine squared x equals 1 for all x. So this simplifies to 1 over cosine squared x, which we can rewrite as 1 over the cosine of x, all of that squared. And 1 over cosine of x is the secant of x, so we get secant squared x. 
So the derivative of tangent x is secant squared x. I'd now like to talk about a common mistake people make. Frequently people will say the derivative of f divided by g is f prime over g prime. You can see where it's tempting to make this mistake. Our brains like things to be simple and it often oversimplifies things. But how can you avoid making this mistake? Here's how. Write down what you think the formula is, then test it. For our test, we're going to let f of x equals x cubed and g of x equals x squared. I chose these two because when you divide f by g, we're going to get something very simple. So the first thing we're going to do is compute the correct answer without using the quotient rule. f divided by g is x cubed divided by x squared, which is x. So the derivative of f divided by g is the derivative of x, which is 1. So we know that's the right answer. So now let's test our formula. If when we plug everything in, we do not get 1, we know our formula was wrong. If f of x equals x cubed, then f prime equals 3x squared. And g of x equals x squared, so the derivative of g is 2x. Let's now test what we think the formula is. We think the derivative of f divided by g is f prime over g prime. If we plug in 3x squared for f prime and 2x for g prime, we get 3x over 2, which is not 1, so we know our formula is wrong. Whenever you're working from memory, it's very helpful to quickly jot down what you think the formulas are and do a quick test to see if they're right or not. Now that we've seen a couple of examples of how to use the quotient rule, I'd like to show you where this rule comes from. So next, we're going to derive this step by step. Let's now derive the quotient rule, see where this formula actually comes from. Here's the trick. f divided by g can be written as f times 1 over g. Here's what we're going to do. We're now going to use the product rule. As a reminder, the product rule says the derivative of a times b equals a prime times b plus a times b prime. If we use that here, we get f prime times 1 over g plus f times 1 over g prime. The problem now is what's the derivative of 1 over g? To answer this question, we're going to look at the limit definition of a derivative. Remember, f prime of x is the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. We're going to use this definition except instead of f, we're going to use 1 over g. So the derivative of 1 over g is the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 over g of x plus h minus 1 over g of x all over h. Now we have nested fractions here, so let's go ahead and simplify this. The way we do that is we're going to multiply this expression by g of x plus h times g of x over g of x plus h times g of x. All we're doing is multiplying this expression by 1, and when we multiply out the tops, we're going to get rid of those nested fractions. So let's do that. If we multiply out the numerators of these fractions, we get g of x minus g of x plus h all over h times 1 over g of x plus h times g of x. Now look at the first fraction. This is the opposite of the expression in the limit definition of a derivative. So we can write this as the limit as h approaches 0 of negative g of x plus h minus g of x all over h times 1 over g of x plus h times g of x. The limit of the first part of this expression is negative g prime of x. And as h approaches 0, the second fraction approaches 1 over g of x times g of x. If we combine these together, we get negative g prime over g squared. Now that we know what the derivative of 1 over g is, we go back to what we were working on originally and plug that in. That now gives us f prime over g plus f times the quantity of negative g prime over g squared. If we multiply out this second fraction, we get f prime over g minus f times g prime over g squared. Next, to combine these together, we need to get a common denominator. So we're going to multiply the first fraction by g over g. That gives us f prime times g all over g squared minus f times g prime over g squared. Combining this together into a single fraction gives us f prime times g minus f times g prime all over g squared. That's the quotient rule. In mathematics, when you're done proving something, it's common to write a little square at the end. That's the symbolic way to say the proof is done.
Did you know that YouTube now lets you subscribe to channels? And get this, it's free. I think you have to click something, but I'm not sure.